Time for some breaking news here. I am Tom Downey as there's some major Cowboys news to get to as their COVID issues continue. Randy Gregory, folks, is now on the reserve COVID list, the latest in a far too deep line of Cowboys players who have been put on the COVID list. This appears to be a separate incident, but Gregory did test positive. So here's what's going on around the Cowboys right now. Zach Martin and Brandon Knight have been activated from the reserve COVID-19 list. Michael Gallup has been placed on on IR. That frees up one of the spots for the Cowboys. The other spot has been freed up because Randy Gregory has been put on that reserve COVID list. So Gregory has tested positive for the virus. He is reportedly asymptomatic right now. The hope and the hype around Randy Gregory was this was going to be the year. This was going to be a major breakout significant season for the often troubled but immensely talented pass rusher now that he's tested positive his week one status is very much in doubt I do not know although there is a chance I do not know if Gregory is going to be cleared in time there is still a chance it's the same stuff the Cowboys went through when they were dealing with the Zach Martin stuff it's a matter of is he going to be cleared in in time. He has to have two negative COVID tests 24 hours apart. So the Cowboys are on the road against the Chargers. That also adds some complexity to it as well. We will see if they do the same emergency plan of flying Gregory out separate. So look, it's not good news. There is a chance, maybe even a better chance than Zach Martin's outlook, of Gregory being able to be activated in time for week one. But make no mistake, I hate this. This is a brutal development for the Cowboys again. It is another brutal break. This is the third starter the Dallas Cowboys are likely going to be without. Lael Collins, probably due to suspension. Michael Gallup is again on IR for at least three weeks. And now Randy Gregory is going to miss some time. That is a major, major impact for the Dallas Cowboys, and it absolutely sucks. Now, Gregory has tested positive, as I mentioned. When the news comes out that an asymptomatic player has tested positive, and with the timing that was mentioned by Michael Gelkin in terms of the two negative COVID tests, that means that player is vaccinated. So again, it is a still unclear which group. Uh, which like three players I think in total are still unvaccinated for the Cowboys, but it appears that Gregory is vaccinated. Yet another breakthrough case the Dallas Cowboys are dealing with right now. So with Gregory likely out for week one, or week two, excuse me, of the season against the LA Chargers, here's what the Cowboys defensive line depth chart looks like. You, of course, have Neville Gallimore also on IR. We'll throw Terrell Basham in there as both DE and DT because you know, some of those guys can kick inside at, at points. Terrell Basham, Dorrance Armstrong, and Bradley and I all kind of rotated in in terms of the, the rotation unit in week one, trying to keep those guys fresh. Tank will line up uh, against the right tackle for the Chargers. Someone's going up against, uh, against Rashawn Slater. I think Basham starts, but I think it'll be a heavy rotation. You'll see Basham, you'll see Armstrong, you'll see Anai. I think you'll see some Chauncey Golston maybe this week. Maybe Azur Kamara is active. We'll see on that front. But the Cowboys are fairly deep right now at defensive end. Well, they're going to need that depth in terms of bodies with Gregory. Likely, not official, but I think likely to miss week, week two of the NFL season. So what is your concern level then, Cowboys fans, with the Randy Gregory COVID news? Get your votes in for me. Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 being not concerned at all. 10 being you are in full-fledged, the sky is falling, meltdown mode. Get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. Back to the other side of the news, the more positive side, right? Zach Martin has been activated by the Dallas Cowboys. That's some Good development on that front. After he missed week one, he was unable to play due to his own COVID-19 results. Now he's back for the Dallas Cowboys. And I think in all likelihood, going to play right guard. Obviously the Cowboys, then with the likely suspension of Leo Collins, he's still appealing his number two uh, 
situation here, so we'll, or his second appeal, I should say. So we'll see on that front. But Cowboys need Martin back. That's going to be a big deal for the Cowboys. They also get back some added depth on the offensive line. Brandon Knight is going to uh, has been activated as well. So some added depth guard tackle hybrid there for the Cowboys as Knight was originally a tackle and has more or less moved inside to the guard position. So the negative side is. The Cowboys have lost Randy Gregory. The positive side here is at least that the Cowboys are getting back uh, Knight and, more importantly, Zach Martin. Now, without Randy Gregory, it was already going to be a tough matchup for Dallas. I thought Rashawn Slater, week one for the other turns against Chase Young, fared pretty damn well. Wasn't perfect, but Slater had a very good performance against, or against the Washington football team for the L.A. Chargers. It is now going to be one of the backups who have to emerge. Dorrance Armstrong got almost a strip sack of, of Tom Brady coming off that right or that, that left end position. Can he step up? Is Terrell Basham, Chauncey Golson, they both back to closer to being 100% or they that dealt with some injuries in the preseason and in training camp? Is it free Bradley and I time? Is it a Zerkamara chance? There are some bodies at defensive end for the Cowboys. Now the question mark becomes, are those backups, and they are backup players, are they good enough to make a splash or at minimum not be a liability against the Dallas Cowboys for the Week 2 matchup against the L.A. Chargers? Now, Cowboys fans, you guys know we got videos every single day. We are filming this live as part of NFL Daily because it was too big a news to not hit. But if you guys want daily Cowboys videos, whether you're watching on our Cowboys channel or watching on the Chat Sports channel, the link is at the bottom of your screen, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Another as-expected move here, Michael Gallup is heading to IR. No real surprise there. Cedric Wilson is set to step up in terms of the, uh, 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 of the Cowboys' active roster. I will make note, by the way, Robert Foster, the wide receiver, is being signed to the Cowboys' practice squad, and he's not the only one. Liam Hairulahu, the kicker who spent a game singular with the Cowboys in the preseason, is also being added to the practice squad. Now, I don't know yet what the other two moves are going to be, but there are other moves coming for the Cowboys from a practice squad uh, perspective. This is the Canadian kicker. Looks fine in the preseason. This move, at least for me, raises red flags around Greg Zerline. You brought in a practice squad guy just to have, just in case. Zerline was not very good in week one. Two brutal missed field goals. Well, Two missed kicks, an extra point and, and the short field goal, the 60-yarder, you know, whatever. It's not the end of the world there in the end. So who you got in this one? With the Cowboys, probably not going to have Randy Gregory. Kicker concerns right now. The, the offensive line, probably not going to have Leo Collins. You're down three starters. Who you got in this game? Type DAL for the Dallas Cowboys or type in LAC for the LA Chargers. 